Okay, so lesson 24, nature of the roots, which is called the discriminant. So as we were talking about in lesson 23, if you look at what's underneath the root symbol, you have b squared minus 4ac. And there is three possibilities. If it's positive, there's two solutions across the x-axis at two points. If it's equal to zero, there's one solution. It touches the x-axis, so we only consider it as one point. If it's negative, then of course you can't take the square root of it, and there's no solutions. That would be like if the graph is way above the x-axis. Okay, so what we can then do is we can look at something like this. So for instance, that part of it, the b squared minus 4 c is called the discriminant. And you've got to get used to that word because we use it a lot. So if your discriminant came out as negative, you have zero roots. If the discriminant came out as seven, or in this case, we just care if it's positive, you have two roots. And if it comes up to zero, then there's one root. Okay. So the next example is, this question asks, for what values of k are there real roots? Now, you've got to pay attention to the, the wording. It says roots, plural. So that means we're not looking for where it crosses at one point. We're looking for where it crosses at two points. If it was one point, we would set it equal to zero. But since it's two points, we are looking for whatever that makes it greater than zero or which is a positive number. So here's our equation up here, x squared plus kx plus 4. So a in this case is 1, whatever's in front of the x squared. b in this case is k, that's what we're looking for, and c is 4. So then we grab our discriminant, which is our b squared minus 4ac, and we plug in the numbers. So b is just k, so k squared minus 4 times 1 times 4. And we're making this greater than 0 because we want it to be positive. So then we get k squared minus 16 is greater than 0. Move the 16 to the over the side, over to the other side, make a positive, and take the square root of it. Now, so it's k is greater than 4. Now, you're, you might have trouble deciding whether or not is it greater than 4 or is it less than 4. So draw yourself a little number line. So on the number line here, we have like negative 4 is 0 and positive 4. So then try some values, right? If we tried, let's say, 2. If we plug 2 in, so the k squared will be 2 squared. So 4 minus 16, that's a negative number, so that doesn't work for us. Okay, so then we can try 5 and try on the right-hand side of 4. So 5 squared would be 25. 25 minus 16, it's a positive number. Yeah, that's greater than 0. Oh, okay, so that works for anything greater than 4. Now, if we plugged in a 4, it would be 4 squared minus 16, which is equal to 0, which would be 1 point. And remember, we want real roots. We want two of them. So we go to the other side, and we can look at the negative 4. So then, of course, try negative 5. Negative 5 squared, the cool thing about when you square negatives, they come out as positive. So 25 minus 16, yep, that's still greater than 0. Okay, so our solution in this case is then k is either less than negative 4 or k is greater than 4 for our values. Now, on the bottom of your formula sheet is another set of formulas, and they're called the sum and product of roots. And this is really interesting because this allows you, if you have two roots, right, so in this case, if you look at this one, x equals negative 1 half and x equals 2, it allows you to work backwards and create a quadratic equation. Now, we did this little work up here, and we actually just factored this trinomial into two binomials and then solved it just because I wanted to show you uh, what the roots are. Okay, so, but let's say you were given just those roots, negative a half and two. Well, we can find the sum and the product of the roots, and it's just like what it is. Sum means take them to, and add them together. Product means take them and multiply them. So negative a half plus two is three over two. Uh, product, you multiply those together, you get negative one. Oh, great. So now what you do is you can actually plug them into the formula, which is on your formula sheet. And it's x squared minus the sum of the roots, x plus the product of the roots. So x squared minus negative 3 over 2x minus 1. Now, the problem with that, that equation does not look like the one originally up here. If you look, oh, that doesn't look like that. Well, you have to remember, can we get rid of the, the denominator in this case? You have to do that, something you learned many, many years ago. You can take the whole thing and times it by 2. So I can take the x squared times it by 2. I can take the negative 3 over 2x times it by 2. I can take the negative 1 and times it by 2. We do that. We end up with 0 equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. So that allows you then, and if you look, that's the same as above. That allows you to take any set of roots you get. So I could say the roots are 4 and negative 2, and you could do the sum of the product of the roots and create an equation. It's as simple as that. 